we've been talking about linear regression and we defined what we mean by Gaussian linear regression. It's this probabilistic model. We model these conditional distributions with a Gaussian or normal distribution where the mean is a linear function of w and it and in this case since we're, we we can always specialize to you know from the general case of a of phi of x to just to this case where it's just linear in x and uh, now but there's something sort of uh, missing here right we we wanted to come up with a function go back way up to the beginning here so we're doing regression this was our setup. We have our data. Okay, we, we have assumed some probabilistic model. Linear regression says take take this particular model. And it's natural, right? We talked about why linear regression is a very natural model to choose. And <clears throat> but we need to choose some function f. And we haven't said what f we should choose in linear regression, Gaussian linear regression. So here's how you choose f. So we, we were motivating this by choosing, first we choose a discriminative approach, and that's a natural thing to do. We choose a Gaussian distribution for these, these conditionals, and then we chose a linear, so the, our third choice was a linear function here. So that was, so we could number these, this was our first choice, this was our second choice. This was our third choice. We ch chose linear and constant here, so very simple. And now, how do we choose f? So, how to choose f? And f is our prediction, our function that we're going to use to predict. Well, if we are thinking from a decision theoretic point of view, we should choose, we should always predict, you know, we should always choose a, a procedure, a decision to minimize our expected loss. That's what decision theory says. Minimize your expected loss. So, okay, well, we have a probability distribution, but what's the loss? Let's choose, now, so this is our first, our fourth choice. Our fourth choice is we'll choose the square loss. And this is the most, in some sense, the most natural since we're doing a regression, right? So the y's and the y's are real valued. And we talked about why square loss is, is a nice natural choice in that case. So remember, square loss is just, it's this function L and it's the, it's the square of the difference between your prediction and the true value of i. That's the square loss. And uh, and what is the square loss? How do we get f from the square loss? Well, let's uh, let's see here. Let's go. Let's make some more space. So minimizing the expected loss, we're going to take the argmin over y's, do you think, remember back to decision theory stuff, of the loss of y is now random, this is the true y, and this is going to be our prediction, so we're minimizing over our predicted value, and we're conditioning on a particular value of x. So, oh, okay, so I I'm using a random x here, but we haven't introduced any distribution on on these x's, right? The only random stuff was, you know, this epsilon here. Or, you know, the y's were random, but the x's were not. But it turns out it doesn't really matter because, it, you know, if you remember um, when we talked about, you know, how to choose f using this this approach, it didn't matter what the marginal distribution on x was. It only mattered what the conditional distribution was. And so since we're conditioning on x, then you can choose, you know, take any, any distribution for x. It doesn't matter. All this works just exactly the same. 
so we are we have this conditional expectation and um, our probabilistic model here for linear regression uh, it depends on this parameter theta right so let's assume for now let's assume some value of theta so here I just mean computing the expected value of y where we're assuming some some num you know, some w and sigma squared so y is this thing and theta is is just like before theta is is this okay so right so let me just say that so we're assuming some theta assume So we want to solve this minimization, and from our when we looked at square loss, we found that you have the beautiful result that the arg min there's a unique minimizer and it's equal to just the conditional expectation of y given that x takes this value. So you can look at the video on square loss if you if you're not familiar with that. And now let's plug in what y is. So y is this thing, right? W is or theta is w and sigma squared. So y is this uh, under this model. The inner product of w with x, the dot product plus this epsilon, given x equals little x. And by the linearity of expectation, this becomes the expectation of the sum. This is a constant. There's nothing random here. All the randomness is here. So the expectation of a constant is the constant. And we get the expectation of epsilon, given x equals little x. But epsilon, well, I didn't exactly say, but usually unless you specify some dependence for a random variable, you always mean that it's independent of everything else. So epsilon here is independent of, well, there's nothing else random going on, I guess, at all. So, so, um, you know, so epsilon, this expectation is just the expectation of epsilon. It doesn't depend on x at all. Oh well, I guess there is some other random. We're say, we're saying x is random here. So so yeah, to be precise, we have some distribution on x, but we're assuming so this is by assumption epsilon is independent of x. And that implies because when uh you know, when you have independence, then you you, you have this property for your conditional distributions. That's just a side note to remember why this is true. That equals the expected value of epsilon. You know, if you if you wrote out the definition of conditional expectation, you know, it's the sum of the values epsilon times these conditional probabilities, and you apply this, and then you just see that it's it's just this expectation. So that's this equals this, and this is just zero right epsilon is a normal random variable with mean zero so it's just the dot product of w with x that is our solution to this minimization and so so we should choose so our strategy this imply this tells us we should our strategy for Gaussian, to be precise, linear regression, I'm summarizing all of our assumptions here, for Gaussian linear regression with square loss, this was, this was, so, uh, so this, uh, this is just summarizing our assumptions. We're doing a, a discriminative model. We're choosing a Gaussian conditional distributions. 
and we're going to use a linear. So all of the assumptions are coming together. The linear uh, function for the mean and the square loss for our loss function. And the strategy is how do we how do we choose f? Well, we choose f of x to be just equal to the dot product of w with x. Super simple. So all that work looking at decision theory and and uh, all that all that paid off nicely here so we can get this nice little result. And this this minimizes your expected loss under this model. So that's a very 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 nice result. Unusual that you can really get the solution like that. And it's that it's so simple. It's just this linear function of x. Oh, how beautiful. Okay, so so that's that's very satisfying. Uh so so you know, so this says so we've solved the well, so in some sense, uh we've almost I guess solved it. We wanted to choose some f to predict new y, so given a new x, then we'll we'll predict a y using this this very simple dot product way way back down here. Okay, so there it is. Using this. But wait, there's still an issue. So we want to choose this, but what's W? <laughs> we don't know what W is. Okay. How so? How are we going to figure out what W we should use? So, but we don't know. Now you know this was. We assumed that we knew the the true theta. This analysis here, you know, this minimized the expected loss when y was actually distributed according to this theta that we assumed. But in general, I mean, you know, you know, basically all the time, we we never know what the true theta is. So we don't know theta. We don't know the true theta. We don't know the true w. And that's where uh, at summation techniques come in. I mentioned before that uh, you know when we were talking about here, blah blah blah, discriminative, estimate theta using D. So we still need to estimate theta. This step still needs to be done. And we can use, so we have one, I guess one final choice here, our fifth choice would be how are we going to estimate theta? And one way, at least, there's several, a few different ways, but one way, and perhaps the most natural way, would be estimate theta. Actually, we just need, need w if we're just doing predictions. But if we wanted to get this distribution, it's nice to have sigma squared also. So our fifth choice is estimate theta using the maximum likelihood estimate. There's different ones you could do. That's not, not necessarily part of the you know linear regression, but this is uh, sort of the most common thing to do to estimate theta. And so now it's all it's all all the pieces are coming together. We've got decision theory, we've got maximum likelihood estimation, we've got supervised, we've got discriminative and generative, so all these pieces are coming together. And, and so next we're going to look at how you use maximum, what, you know, what the mass, maximum likelihood estimate for theta is.